Well, hi there, good evening everybody. Mark Traversona here at Saturn Magic and we're live on a Sunday evening again. So uh, yeah, very good evening to you all and we're here on the 1st of September. Start of a new month and uh, I've still got the happy birthday sign up behind me which we had there last week. And uh, i just got to thank you all for supporting us in our seven day event that we had, uh, that uh, we finished off at the end of last month, on Friday actually, finished off on Friday. And uh, you actually gave us, uh, so it was our birthday, and talk about celebrating our birthday in style, we actually had our best month ever here at Saturn Magic in August, believe it or not. August is normally for us one of the worst months of the year because a lot of people are off on holiday. So uh, we had a tremendous August, so thank you very much for that everybody. So, uh, good evening to those of you joining in very, very promptly. So, just a quick thank you, I was just saying, for um, for a brilliant sales month in August. Brilliant. Uh, we're going to move on tonight uh, to talk about uh, a few things. I, I mentioned them in the email today. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Spectro Touch uh, by, well, Joe Miranda's the one that's made it. Uh, I should have made a note of the guy's name, actually, that, um, let me start that bonging, I should have made a note of the guy's name. Uh, that, is, that sort of invented the original concept, so I apologise for that. Uh, but the Spectro Touch has been released, and is Steve on? Yeah, Steve is on, actually. And Steve has actually sent me a couple of emails over the, the past um, week or so, saying, what do you think? How do you feel about it? And I've been very much on the fence about this one, and um, I've been thinking about it more and more. Um, PK Touches isn't my kind of style. I'm not that kind of performer that does that... Uh, if you look at the uh, sort of trailer and his performances and things, I'm not the kind of person that does that kind of thing. Uh, when I saw the gimmick, and that's where Joe Miranda's been very transparent with this, and he's done that with a lot of his releases actually recently, in that you basically get to see what it is before you buy it. So you can see in the pictures that are on there, you've got this little, um, not quite as big as a matchbox, but you've got this um, you know, little box thing, and uh, the thing you can see on the top is like a little hammer. And there's a remote control and you can control the uh, the hammer um, and uh, basically during your performance you've got to um, uh, and, and this is the bit where I wasn't too sure whether I liked it or not actually um, because it depends on your performing situation if you're in a very this is my view uh, you could get away with it in other situations but if you want to be sort of be almost 100% no chance of getting caught on this you really want one spectator up with you in a stage or a parlor environment where they're not going to move around um, I think if someone's in their comfort zone and maybe you were doing it in someone's house in like a house party or something like that and they were stood in front uh, of the group Pe um, and they are sort of familiar with the surroundings. I think people are liable to do things that you know you wouldn't want them to do during the routine. Uh, but up on stage, it's your uh, comfort zone, and uh, the person is certainly out of theirs, and you're instructing them exactly what to do. So they will follow along. So I think performed in that kind of situation, Spectro Touch is going to work absolutely brilliantly for you. Um, the um, application of the gimmick um, it's held on with uh, double side stick tape uh, you, you only get one piece attached to it so not that it's going to cost you a fortune but you need to go out and buy some really good quality double sided tape because you probably want to use a new piece every single performance just to be 100% certain uh, that means you don't want to be picking anyone uh, that's wearing like a mohair jumper or a thick leather jacket or some well thick leather jacket would stick too but they they might struggle feeling so you really want to be picking someone that's wearing a, a shirt like me a t-shirt or a normal formal shirt um, or if it's a um, uh, I don't know whether you pick a lady. For, if, if you're a lady anyway, then I suppose you could pick another lady. Uh, you do need to position this to load and unload. You do need to be a bit tactile with the spectator, so they're used to you touching them. Uh, so to pick a lady for the routine, not that it's you know that bad to sort of position a lady where you want, uh, but you might find it easier to do it with uh, a man if you don't want to put yourself in that situation where you're having to touch uh, a female. Uh, the operation of the gimmick, uh, it's rechargeable, uh, so you get a USB charger uh, with it. Uh, you only get the one um, charger with it, but uh, and actually I didn't try a separate USB wire. You get like a stumpy USB thing, like someone's cut the cable off, but it's got the plug on the other end, and um, each unit plugs into it, so you can only charge one at a time. Um, which is a bit of a pain in the bum, because if you want to charge both, you've got to charge one and then charge the other. But I suspect, and I haven't tried it actually, uh, that a normal um, 
a USB mini cable in the other one would probably work uh, absolutely fine so I think that's all it is but you just get this little stumpy one with it so uh, you can charge both up at the same time uh, you've got LED indicators uh, which flash when it needs charging and stay solid when it's charged so that's pretty straightforward and um, he says it will work for eight hours uh, of use on one charge so that this isn't the sort of thing that you're going to do walk around purely from the sort of situation that I said at the beginning uh, you don't want to be uh, planting this on somebody when they're in a group or a walk around situation uh, because it only needs someone to walk behind and think you know what on earth's going on here or what's that and you're busted so it's you know in my view it is literally limited to when you're in a proper stage type environment or at least in a very formal parlor type situation where people are not going to sort of mess you about uh, other than that uh, it works very well uh, there's a number of operating modes on the remote control uh, you can have a mode where you push the button straight away and it will tap straight away on the spectator. Uh, you can have a mode where you can delay uh, the tap and I'll explain sort of why in a minute. If you push the remote control it can tap straight away or you can push the remote control and it can delay. I can't remember what the maximum delay is but in the tutorial he delays it for 7 seconds uh, just as an example. So he delays it for 7 seconds. After 5 seconds you get a buzz. Uh, to warn you that it's now two seconds away from tapping the spectator. So basically you'll be touching the remote, your hands are then free for five seconds in a seven second delay, uh, you'll then feel a vibration and you know that you've then got two seconds to then you know, do your uh, imaginary touch for the spectator to then feel the touch. Uh, and that delay can be varied. Uh, one little thing with that, when you switch the remote off and back on again, you have to reset the delay. So there's no, no uh, memory, so don't forget. Because if you're going to use the same delay every single performance, then keep the remote switched on if you're going to perform it multiple times in an evening, possibly. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to reset the delay every time. Um, so you've got those uh, facilities there to be able to do that. I do like the idea of having the delay because you can push the button uh, and then your hands are out in the open uh, whereas if you've got the remote, you can actually palm the remote, it is very small, but if you want your hands to be totally free, uh, then you, most people are probably going to use the uh, delay option. Uh, there's also the optional extra, uh, which is actually sold out at the moment and available, but I'm sure it'll be back in stock very soon, uh, of a toe switch, uh, which that's what it is. It's a switch that's in your shoe, which you can operate without your pockets even going anywhere near your, uh, without your hands going anywhere near your pockets for those performers that want to be ultra clean and don't want to be you know got their hands out in the open the whole time they can operate it with their toe um, so I'm talking positively about this when I said to Steve about it I said well I'm not too sure I wasn't too sure whether because when I said to Steve I wasn't too sure about whether it was for him or not I think that's purely because um, I'm not too sure that he does perform in a lot of actual stage type situations um, so you know um, it probably wouldn't because it's not a cheap item uh, it, it necessarily wouldn't be for him if he's not in that kind of situation all the time if it's more smaller groups or family and friends and things like that then uh, there's a bit more of a chance of getting busted with it so you need to be in as I say quite a controlled environment uh, but having played around with it it seems very robust it does the job um, one thing that um, I did like about it actually as opposed to some of the ones that are on the market uh, other versions on the market you've got chairs that you have to carry around so it's got the advantage that you're not carrying around a chair you've just got this small little box uh, you've also got the advantage that it doesn't vibrate at the spectator um, which uh, I hadn't really thought about that too much actually but uh, when he pointed it out in the instructions I thought actually he's got a point there because some of the other versions that attach to chairs or whatever uh, actually vibrate at the person that's being touched uh, which means it doesn't feel like a touch uh, whereas this will give them like a tap as if they've been touched so uh, it's got that advantage that it's not a vibration it's a touch so um, you can see I'm talking quite positively it's not something I would do I'm not that kind of performer but if you're the mentalist type uh, that's got that kind of uh, mental thing going in your show uh, then yeah you, you might want to uh, have a look at this and uh, you know give it some consideration it's not a cheap item uh, but then again neither are the expensive chairs and things and you've got to carry a big chair around so it's certainly a, uh, 
a worthy um, alternative, let's say, on the market. I did think, though, uh, as, a, as a negative to it, uh, that there are other versions uh, which don't need uh, any devices at all, because PK Touch is a classic effect. So you can actually do the effect without any uh, electronic devices. Uh, but as with uh, a lot of electronic devices that have come on the market, they do enable you to do the PK Touch routine uh, cleaner and, uh, how can I say, from a magician's perspective, uh, a lot cleaner and more pure, let's say, than some of the uh, normal versions of uh, electric, uh, not electric touch, of PK Touches. Um, so, yeah, there are uh, low tech versions. Uh, which uh, are sort of working on dual reality and things. And there's a little bit of that going in the main routine, actually, which I thought was quite nice as well. Uh, but the actual uh, mechanism does enable you to be very clean. Uh, I will actually go back to the routine as well and say that uh, I did quite like the shadow aspect. And again, that has to be set up on stage with a spotlight and everything. So you've got the spectator's sh uh, shadow against the wall and then your shadow can come along and touch if you're in a stage environment and can set that up. I'm sure that's a very, very strong effect. So uh, what I'm saying here is uh, for the stage performer and you do this kind of thing, mentalism, maybe you do a PK touch routine already and uh, you want to make it that little bit more pure, that elevate it a little bit higher, then yes, this is worth considering. If you're the sort of person that's doing close-up walk-around versions of it, like D'Angelo's Touch was one that was released a few months back, um, that kind of PK touch routine is... Um, is easier to do in that kind of situation than than, than this. So, uh, and, and you know why, because you can see the gimmicks and things that you, you've got in play there. So uh, hopefully uh, that's a, a good explanation for you there of uh, Spectro, uh, Spectro Touch. Uh, I'm neither saying get it or not, because really it depends on your performance style and your environment. But uh, if you're a stage performer, then it should be uh, maybe high up there on your list for consideration. Okay, okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm just having a quick look down your list of comments now. Uh, to uh, I'll see Dave's on there. I picked Dave out actually because uh, I was out yesterday and uh, a Facebook notification came up uh, from Dave saying, uh, "Wow, wow, wow!" Did uh, Reborn for the first time at a wedding uh, yesterday. Reactions were I can't remember what his words were, but great, brilliant, whatever it was. Uh, and uh, Dave kindly let us share his post on our uh, Facebook page because uh, Re Reborn is actually one of those effects that but people think, why on earth? Sorry, I'm going off on Reborn because I just saw Dave's name there. It wasn't what I was going to talk about next, but I just saw Dave there. Uh, Reborn is one of those effects that um, people think, why on earth would I want to produce a block of ice? You know, it's a bit random, it doesn't make sense. The fact is that it doesn't make sense and it's very random is what makes it so strong. It's very practical to do, it's easy to transport the ice, it's easy to carry it around with the holder and everything. And the reactions, as Dave found out, are uh, absolutely uh, incredible. You know, you could say, well, I'm bound to say that anyway because we sell the thing, but trust me, producing a block of ice is one of the strongest effects. Uh, that you could do for a spectator, it really, really is. But anyway, I won't bang on about Reborn anymore. I just saw Dave on. It's back in stock, by the way, because it did sell out last week. Uh, so it is now back in stock. But I'm not going to say any more about that because we've covered it in quite a few lives and things already. Uh, but just thought I'd mention that means I saw Dave was on there. Uh, oh, someone's saying, um, Nigel's saying hello to uh, Joe Miranda. I didn't see he was on actually. Is he still here? Can't see him because he just pop in on our lives. Maybe he was there and he disappeared a, a few moments ago. Oh, yes, he is there. Hi there. Evening. Um, yeah, see, Steve's agreeing with what I said uh, there on the Spectro Touch. Uh, great item. Oh, Nigel's got it on order already. Uh, Dave saying about D'Angelo's touch, a nice, a nice alternative which certainly can be used more in a walk around situation as I said. Um, oh Janet saying loves Reborn as well, excellent, thank you. And um, Andy, 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 actually Andy, uh, I haven't had a chance to reply to your email 
because uh, it is Sunday at the end of the day. I do try and reply to emails if I can at the weekends, but you can appreciate I'm doing gigs and we're busy and uh, you do things personally at the weekend. So I was going to reply to you tomorrow, but Andy um, got in on the cue cards uh, deal uh, and uh, we'll be getting those out to you tomorrow. So uh, thanks for that, Andy. Uh, right, now where am I this evening? Right, oh yes, uh, last week I held up a mock um, creation that we've done for Connected because Connected ships tomorrow. Uh, Connected is the uh, Guess Who uh, routine. Uh, those of you that don't know, actually, let me just grab my one here. Uh, it's an addition to uh, Insight by Hugo Shelley, and basically, what you've got is a Guess Who board, um, proper Guess Who. That one's just flipped down at the back there, uh, and you've so you can flip them up and down, we all know how to play Guess Who, and you get the board there, uh, you get character cards, obviously, because someone needs to pick a card, uh, so you get character cards, colours may vary of what you get because the sets do, so you get character cards, uh, someone picks a character card, they put it inside an envelope, you put it to one side, they remember who they picked, some characteristics, they pick someone they like the look of, remember the characteristics, some think what kind of person they might be, and um, you then start to ask them some questions about the particular person, uh, but you don't ask them, are they wearing a hat? Have they got a moustache? You say, are they vegan? Are they you know, vegetarian? Just make it up some stupid questions uh, and you do really get hilarious responses from the audience. You can even say, I know a lot about this person. What, 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 um, you know, what question could we ask and get members of the audience to shout out questions? They'll soon catch on that uh, you're asking for stupid uh, questions, not have they got a moustache, etc. Uh, and uh, because it works with Hugo Shelley's Insight, either the uh, any of the versions of Insight that have been on the market actually, um, it will work with, <coughs> and you can uh, know straight away uh, because of the way that Insight works. If you've got it, you've got to have the app that goes with your mobile phone, uh, but you can know immediately which character they've got, and then it's just all about playing and having fun with the audience. So you've got a great mentalism effect. Uh, linked into the classic Guess Who game. Uh, what we did last week though was showed a mock-up because I've been talking to customers on the phone about it and a few said well you've got to carry the board around you know can't you make it more mobile and I thought well, how on earth can we do that and they do do pocket versions of Guess Who but you've still they're not really pocket size and they've still got bits that could if you got it in your pocket and be awkward and things like that and I was talking away and suddenly uh, talking to Mike one of our customers I uh, had a revelation as such, and it transpired into this, which this is now the final version. Uh, you get this menu, that you get when you go and order your food down the pub or whatever. You get this menu, which does fit inside your jacket inside pockets. A4 folded into three, so you can judge the size there, so it fits easily inside uh, a jacket pocket. It's printed on 300 GSM uh, gloss laminated card, so it's going to be very durable. Uh, it's so you can actually use this on stage where the board is too small. If you imagine that if you are on stage, people aren't going to see the board necessarily. Uh, although you could still flick the board down um, because you're, um, you know, they can imagine what you're doing as you're flicking through. Uh, but if you wanted uh, to not even use the board on stage, you could even use this version on stage. Although primarily we thought about it for close up. Uh, because you don't need to carry the board at all. So basically you've got this in your pocket, close up or stage, on a big stage. You can bring this out. Anyone remember this game? Guess who? Yeah, guess who? Uh, do you remember what it's all about? You've got all these people and you have to pick one and uh, you will you know, eliminate with questions to what it is. So you can see we get the very nice guess who um, card there. Uh, you also get a dry white marker with it as well because obviously you can't flip these people down so the idea is is that you get someone to pick one of the cards that I just showed you and uh, they hide it away in the envelope so you can't see it and um, you basically cross off or tick off the people uh, as you go down and you end up with one left and sure enough it will be the correct one so you can have exactly the same gags and everything with people uh, but you've got this thing that you know even if on stage you turn it to yourself to do the ticking off you've got this very nice visual of the guess who there and then you can turn it round and say well that only leaves us with a few left and I'll tick some more off uh, so it even though I say so myself it looks absolutely fantastic uh, the way this has uh, been uh, done and come out 
and you, once you've done it, you can just wipe it clean, uh, put it back in your pocket and put the cards back away and you're away off to the next group or ready for your next performance with it. Uh, so that's now ready. It wasn't uh, listed originally with uh, Connected because it only came about what in the pre-order period. Uh, which actually gives a very good justification for having a pre-order period actually because it did give us chance to add this because everyone that ordered it before I came up with this um, is going to get this in effect free of charge we're just throwing it in for the same um, same cost we haven't altered the cost of the effect for the fact we're giving you a dry right marker and the um, now laminated sheet so you can do it uh, this way as well if you want to uh, so it just proves that a pre-order period can actually be beneficial it also helps, when I say also helps us judge, judge demand, when Kieran and myself talked about uh, Connected, we decided how many we, we were going to make. And we sort of had a guess as to how many we would sell. And uh, we sold out within, I think it was just over a week actually. And that was as many as we thought we needed to make for uh, the period up to and including uh, well, we thought we might sell out before Blackpool and might have to make some more, but we thought, well, if we don't sell them all, then I'm sure we'll sell them at Blackpool when we show people there. So we made them all and we sold out within a week. So then we had to make some more because we were out of stock for a while, so we had to get all the components and stuff and then make everything again. Uh, and we made all those. We've currently got uh, one left. At, I think there's one left made at the moment. Um, everyone's been beavering away today while I've been uh, out. Uh, making more uh, so hopefully by sort of lunchtime tomorrow we'll be uh, hopefully stop back up to a reasonable level because I know there's a few sets now that just need sort of boxing and packaging and things so it's just been absolutely amazing the reaction to this <laughs> when Kieran and myself have ideas we think are people really going to like these um, in the way that because our ideas aren't really normal you know you wouldn't think about doing guess who um, for an audience and you think yeah, well I just hope that people like producing lumps of ice blocks of ice it isn't the normal thing that uh, magicians do uh, but producing blocks of ice is now turning out to be quite a normal thing for instance that magicians do so or uh, flash producing lollipops for instance which again uh, was something people thought uh, was absolutely crazy when that first came out so it's quite strange uh, and nice actually that these different things are being perceived as uh, uh, good to perform um, so yeah, that's a quick update on the uh, Connected uh, by uh, Kieran. Um, it was actually in effect that he said uh, he was that pleased that because most of the things we work together on and he said, uh, yes, he says, I created this one on my own and you didn't have any input into it whatsoever. Uh, and I said, yeah, you're right, actually. So that's why it says Connected by Kieran Johnson. But now... I did add a little bit to it, which makes me smile a little bit. Uh, but it's still got Kieran's name on the box because it was 99% uh, his idea. And uh, it's really weird that because uh, last week he was on and he was holding his daughter Ellie in his arms. Uh, it was actually when he was playing with his son um, while they were waiting for the baby to come. Uh, and they were playing games and things. And um, that's when the sort of guess who uh, idea uh, sort of made. so it's quite a quick thing that he actually uh, came up with and I said yeah we've got to do that and immediately that he said it uh, I started doing it I've done it in a few shows now and it goes down absolutely fantastically so I'll stop waffling on about connected you can see I'm loving it and uh, I've got a lot of uh, passion for the effect it does go down absolutely brilliantly and it's something different as well right uh, quick look down the uh, oh we got someone looking forward to magical okay we'll mention that maybe next they're yeah, connected all the connecteds are shipping tomorrow um, yeah you do need insight uh, to um, to use it uh, we have got some insight uh, over here on the shelf you can see those white boxes over there we've got them in stock uh, the cheapest way to buy it is to buy the Insight ESP. Uh, the, Ins the Insight Pro comes with a full deck of cards, which is a lot more expensive. The Pro, I think it's about 265 from memory. Can't remember exactly. Excuse me, exactly. Uh, so it, it, it's not a cheap effect if you bought Insight and uh, connected together. Uh, but if you own Insight already, then adding connected to it isn't, you know, as big a chunk of money obviously. Uh, we have had some people order both because they can see the uh, 
uh, I can see the, the use or the uh, how good the effect can be. Uh, so it is a £400 effect. With the ESP, you do get the ESP cards with it as well. So obviously you can use ESP cards in different routines uh, if you want to. Uh, let's see. Okay, Dave's mentioned about red. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so yeah, Magic Call, I've got that on my list here. Uh, that's due out uh, this week. Uh, just some final touches being done to the tutorial and also some little additions to the uh, app as well. Uh, because Mark and myself were talking um, about it and um, some of the posts on the Magic Cafe, uh, some people were saying, oh, I've got a free app, a free, um, a free version that uh, does fake phone calls uh, and it works perfectly fine for me. Um, I do doubt their claims on that actually because we haven't found one fake call app which looks exactly the same as uh, your iPhone screen. You might get ones that are similar to your iPhone screen but if you want 100% pure looks like your own iPhone screen uh, then Magical does look uh, like it. A lot of them look absolutely terrible. A lot of them when you hang up the call take you to a menu which has got all sorts of options and pictures and stuff all over it. So. Um, you know you want to hang up the call with no one seeing so they can see the screen whereas when you hang up the call with magic call it returns to your um, home screen if you want or to um, it's, I won't explain now but um, it can return to your home screen or to the um, if you just close if you open the app up I'll explain where you've got all your icons if you open up the app by touching the icon uh, and then use it and close it it will close to the same page that's got that icon on now you might not want to do that um, because when you close the thing, if someone was to then look at your phone, I don't know whether they would or not, but you never know uh, in a situation, someone might look down and see a little icon with magic all, uh, which you wouldn't necessarily want. So the way to get over that, and this is for any app that you use actually on your mobile phone, so it might be a little tip for anybody that does have that worry when they close an, an app down, uh, that people might see the icon. So imagine you've gone to that um, page that's got the icon on, you've clicked it, the app has opened up, whichever app, Magic Call or any app on your phone, so you can try this to see that it does work. You've opened up an app on your phone, you've then um, swiped it up um, to, um, or push the button, depends what phone you've got, but I've got the uh, X, so you sort of swipe up to get back to the uh, icon page with all the things on and you'll see that app icon there. Um, what you actually want to do uh, is get back to your home screen um, and um, then sort of uh, swipe up so that it opens up all of the apps that are open so because when we came out of the app we didn't actually close the app down so in other words you've opened the app up you've swiped up so it uh, disappears off the screen you then get back to your home screen you then swipe up sort of halfway which then shows you all the apps that are open and then you go back into the app from there so then when you actually hang up the call in Magical's instance, or if you close an app down that is open, uh, it will return to your home screen, which hasn't got the icon on for the app that was there in the first place. It's quite a long explanation. I hope that makes sense. But I'm sure a lot of you probably know how to use iPhones, but some of you might not. And there's just a little tip there uh, how you can uh, hide uh, the app icon if you're worried about people seeing it. Uh, the, um, oh, the other thing we're adding in, uh, we, were, we were actually saying we've got the celebrity and all the features and the forces and the voice interaction with Tom Cruise and everything, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but then I said to Mark, actually, um, because the app is so realistic as a phone call, we didn't actually set this up to be a fake call app. So we thought, actually, what we need to, because you can actually program it for anybody that you want um, for like an instant call. We said, actually, if you are out, um, and let's use the example, say you are out on a date or you, 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 you've met somebody that you're not too sure if you want to hang around there for too long or you've been invited around somebody's house and you're thinking, oh, gosh, we've got to go, you know, but OK, fair enough, we'll go. Um, what you can do, we're, we're adding in uh, dad, mum, sis, bro, um, some family member names. Um, so that, um, not the actual name, but you know, mum, dad, bro, sis. Uh, so that if you're, you know, around a friend's house, they've invited you around, you didn't really want to go anyway, and you can set up your uh, magical, we say mum, 
and uh, of course you're there and the phone's on the table you're nowhere near it and the phone rings and in fake call app style you can pick it up and go hi mum you all right you're not oh, okay right i'll be right round and you've got the excuse to escape so not for a magic trick but you can use all of the facility of either timer or remote control or just touching the phone and then the timer starts uh, and then it will ring after you know whatever delay you've set for it so you've got different options there because uh, we thought we you know it's it's nothing to add those uh, the, there won't be any photos with uh, those ones they'll just be the text that comes up because obviously someone might know what your mum looks like uh, actually, I will mention the photos as well, again on the Magic Cafe. Uh, it drives me absolutely crazy because the uh, trailer and the instructions and or uh, ad copy that we've written tells you what you can do. Um, again, we're getting criticised that how many people have photos come up on their phone when the phone rings? Uh, well, I've seen people who do have photos of people come up on their phone, so fine. If you're one of those people that uses photos on your phone, then Magical is just what you want as well, because uh, the person's photo will also come up on your phone. Because if everyone knows that you've got everyone's photo on the phone, and then your phone rings and it hasn't got a photo on, that could be suspicious. Um, but then the person on the cafe was saying, well, actually, I don't have photos on my phone, so this is going to look suspicious if uh, Tom Cruise's photo comes up on the phone. Uh, well, the thing is, you've got the option in settings to either have photos on or off, so you know you can solve that problem so it can suit you. You can also have voice announcement of the person, so it will say uh, Tom Cruise mobile um, when the phone's ringing, uh, which is again, if you use voice announcements for whatever reason, uh, this gives you voice announcements as well. Again, you can turn voice announcements on and off. So you've got the uh, the options there. So it is all there in the ad copy and everything, but uh, unfortunately, as usual, um, when people are just have, you know not really 100% interested in it, they're obviously not watching and reading everything properly, uh, and then you're getting comments, well, will it do this? Will it do that? And you think, well, just read read that. And in fact, Paul Harris said with, uh, oh, it's Janet Harris, sorry, said about uh, one of the latest effects, do people actually read the ad copy anymore? Because all the questions. Uh, that are being asked uh, are there in the ad copy but uh, I can understand people are busy and maybe they just quickly glance at things so that's just a quick update on Magical uh, look out for your emails towards the end of the week uh, uh, those that have ordered it already and uh, you'll get the information on how to uh, download the app uh, so that's a quick little update on Magical um, oh, Red um, Dave is saying uh, by Eduardo Boulanger, I hope I've spelt his name correctly. Uh, if, you've, if you don't know that one, that is a, uh, an effect where you've got a sponge ball and uh, a, a syringe, um, you know, plastic syringe thing. And basically you're injecting and removing the colour from the sponge ball and it's a sponge ball routine. So if you like sponge ball routines, this is different or gives you a different twist on a sponge ball routine where you appear to be either injecting or removing the colour from the sponge ball. So it's an effect where the sponge ball sort of move around, uh, multiply, um, change colour, half dyed and stuff like that. So uh, it's a very sort of quick explanation. Uh, it's as easy to do as any sort of normal sponge ball routine. So, you know, you know, there's certain things you need to do with sponge ball routines to make the balls appear and disappear. So if you do a sponge ball routine already and you like the idea of adding a different sort of twist to it, uh, then you should check out Red. Good routine. Okay, Rod saying, will you be able to add your relatives' photos to the app? You won't be able to do that, unfortunately, because the uh, purely the way that your iPhone uh, works and the way apps work, uh, I'm not actually aware of any apps um, where you can sort of add your own either dictation or photos and stuff like that actually into the app, because uh, it is a fairly fixed thing. And also you've got the issue that if the app is updated, um, then it would overwrite anything that you've done to it anyway and sort of remove it. So no, you can't add your own personalization to the app. Uh, if there's enough requests uh, for things, uh, then obviously we would look at maybe updates and adding things. Uh, there's obviously a cost involved to do updates and additions, so it would it would just have to be looked at if we think something is you know, that good that we're gonna add something to it. The addition of mum, dad, bro, sis, for instance, just as extra callers was is a really easy thing to do. 
uh, so, uh, the same as if there's a new celebrity suddenly pops up that's really popular uh, again that can be added in and uh, an update can be done to uh, you know get the latest uh, sort of version if you know to me okay so the next uh, oh yeah tap you can add uh, photos and things in there yes you can actually but uh, no not with magical you can't add your own photos and stuff in there um, right next one i wanted to mention i'd love to have had one up actually but they're all sold and uh, and packaged uh, ready to go and that's although we got more coming in tomorrow and tomorrow yes tomorrow so i was just hesitating a bit there because tomorrow in america it's actually a bank holiday so we're not actually having a delivery sent to us tomorrow um but we are getting one delivered tomorrow which was friday's delivery coming in tomorrow uh, if you've got anything on special order um from Thursday late-ish onwards uh, that actually now won't arrive with us until uh, Wednesday uh, because Murphy's are actually shut until Tuesday now so uh, no so that'll be Thursday actually when it arrives because um, it's a three-day delivery uh, right maximum entertainment we're talking about by Ken Webber uh, so great book I've got the uh, maximum entertainment one if you call it that on my shelf upstairs and I'm looking forward to getting hold of, a t of the two. Now, I'm not a great reader of books, as regular watchers will know, but that is one book that I did uh, make the effort to read. Uh, the other one was Magic and Showmanship by Hemming Nelms, I think the guy was. Um, I might have pronounced that wrong. Uh, but those are certainly two books I have read. Uh, and if you stand up and perform for people in any way at all, then getting Ken Webber's book is certainly worth having a look at. Uh, and it's not expensive either, so um, you know you should check out Maximum Entertainment if you uh, the sort of uh, there's no tricks. It's all uh, the sort of call them director's notes on how you should do things, how you can frame things, and whatever. Uh, so looking at Ken Webber's book is uh, it's sort of considered by a lot of people to be a must-read for all mid not necessarily magicians but performers as well so if you've not heard of the maximum entertainment book uh, get on the website there you'll see it fairly high in the list there on our um, might even still be on the home page list because it's still quite new uh, look it up maximum entertainment from ken weber right a couple of things that i will uh, talk about now because a few people have messaged about this in um, in the past few days there's a couple of light bulbs believe it or not actually appeared on the uh, website uh, the first one's by mr magic and it's under 10 pounds it might even be under five pounds actually uh, but that is the normal um, cheap um, gimmick light bulb that you get for putting on top of cards or lighting up when you want it to so um, that um, is nothing sort of revolutionary it's just uh, someone else has made that light bulb and it's you know now available uh, the other one that's uh, been listed on the website is uh, uh, another light bulb if you have a look there I can't remember what they call it now but it's by uh, Magic007 uh, and that one is remote control so that's telling you the same um, so it's telling you that obviously it's a remote control light bulb so instead of having to use a, a magnet type reed switch or whatever to uh, turn the bulb on and off uh, which some people might not like to do and you've got to be holding the bulb as well uh, or moving it near to a magnet which will switch it on which could raise suspicion uh, around suspicion uh, but the remote control one you can obviously put the bulb down and use the remote control to make it flash on and off you could fit it in a lamp uh, or something and have the lamp flash or whatever to your command so for people doing uh, sort of seancey type things that's good that you can put it in there uh, and have a remote control light bulb for uh, you know a reasonable price really uh, or you can use it in the normal kind of light bulb ways or have the spectator hold the bulb and it will um, light when they get to the required position uh, so pretty straightforward um, we've got um, actually I think all the socks sold out that's coming in tomorrow but it's still available uh, on the website uh, so we'll get it within a few days time if you choose to order one of those okay the uh, uh, Stephen Holt uh, actually asked me to um, so we, we when we emailed out today I said anything you want me to talk about then uh, just email and I'll do my best to cover it 
uh, very quick uh, coverage. Stephen's been thinking about getting Stickman Bob, which is also by Kieran Johnson, and he asked me just to briefly talk about it. Uh, it's a close-up or even parlour effect. You can even do it stage, actually, because you can have a lot of fun with it, even though you are just using a poker-sized deck of cards. Uh, but the basic, you, you can present it in so many different ways, either fairly straight or in a comedy way, which is the way that uh, I like to do it. And um, I normally say, look, you know, I'm not very good at cards, but, um, you know, we'll try and do a card trick. Um, no, it's not working, is it? I've got a little friend here that helps me out. And I get out a little piece of uh, paper, draw on the little stick now magician. Uh, should we give him a name? And they come up with a name for him and um, go into all sorts of patter. Uh, about he used to um, work in the circus and he was the stuntman. It was the best paid job. Uh, and then, but then he found out he could earn more money being a magician, and he could fly. Do you want to see him fly? And you can let the piece of paper go, and it'll flutter to the floor, and say, so, well, he didn't really make much money being a magician. But then he thought he'd combine the both together, um, and hopefully, because he he's going to find the card. And so you've had a card picked, you've had a spectator sign it. Uh, all very easy process to actually do that. Uh, I wouldn't even say there's if you can handle. There's no advanced or even intermediate skills for doing that. It's very basic card skills required to get them to pick the card. Uh, and it goes um, into the box and you then uh, scrunch up your little stickman piece of paper, put them inside the uh, cannon and then you light the fuse on the cannon and uh, he fires at the box. Um, you see on the trailer there's a little bit of distance there because it will fire a distance but to be safe we normally actually put it quite close. Uh, and uh, if you're performing on a hard table then um, you haven't really got to worry about any flash let's say from the flames depending on if it's a really expensive wood table then I'd put something underneath uh, but if you're just in a situation where the table doesn't really matter if there's a slight not that you're going to scorch things but you know you know what I mean if it's a uh, a table that you definitely don't want to damage you, you're not going to I'm using the right words <laughs> wrong words here because it's not going to damage the table it's going to, um, um, if you're in a pub and it's just a normal tabletop, then you just do it. If you've got a posh tablecloth or something there, you don't want to risk getting a slight brown singe mark or anything on there when the flame uh, goes off. Uh, so normally we just put a playing card or something in front of the box just to take away that to any risk of that happening so everything's nice and safe. Uh, the stickman fires out the cannon. The side of the box, the back of the box then bursts into flames and you're then then with a cutout in the back of the box uh, which shows a stick man sort of in an animated pose and you then tip the cards out and uh, go through the cards one at a time saying oh look what's happened there look his hat's fallen off as well and then you get to a card which has got a sort of smoked uh, impression of a stick man on it and when you turn it round it's their sign card so it's as simple as that add fire to anything and it elevates an effect a million percent that's been said uh, quite a few times uh, so stickman bob you can do it close up on a table or you can even do it in a parlor or stage situation because you can have some fun with the flying and showing the stickman and you can move around quite a bit you can set it all up on stage you can have the deck of cards uh, facing the audience and put the cannon in front even though it's a small cannon they can see it uh, for parlor situations it's absolutely fine so you've got a trick that will play good for you know, certainly parlour and close up. Uh, if actually, if you've got any production or cameras on stage, it would certainly play uh, fine for a stage, uh, a big stage as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's just a very quick rundown on Stickman Bob. You do need flash paper, which doesn't come with it. We can't ship flash paper internationally. We, hardly a week goes by when we don't get asked about shipping flash paper internationally. Unfortunately, it is illegal to fly with flash paper. Uh, I've seen magicians say, well, I go on a plane with flash paper. If you get caught with flash paper on a plane, you're looking, you're going to have to pre, 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 pre pretty dumb uh, to it. Because if you say, uh, you know, if you admit to knowing it's dangerous or illegal, then you're going to be in big trouble. Um, so uh, it's just not one of that. And flying it like as a parcel, you can't do it um, because it uh, flash paper is uh, combustible. It burns very quickly. If you just get a... Um, in fact, we, we had a batch of flash paper that didn't turn out as we wanted it. And I didn't just want to put it in the uh, bin, because obviously I don't want to put a, flam a highly flammable substance in it. There was quite a few sheets. So I put it in a metal bucket and set fire to it. And crikey, I couldn't believe it. It was like a jet engine when it went off. Uh, it was only, um, it was quite a lot of it, to be honest. Uh, but I was saying a lot. There was probably 10, 20 sheets, maybe. 
um, big sheets, almost uh, they're sort of 10 by 8 inches. So there was about 10 or 20 sheets in this bucket when I set fire to it, and I could not believe the height of the flame that came out of the bucket when it went off. Uh, so if you imagine there's a, a parcel of this on an aeroplane and it did somehow um, combust, uh, you don't want to be the one responsible for bringing down the aeroplane. So we don't ship it internationally. Uh, you can buy our printable flash paper, our premium printable flash paper and print your own. Uh, or uh, We do flash string as well. Uh, flash products come wet as well. The amount of times people email us and say this flash paper doesn't work, you have to dry it out before you use it. Uh, uh, again because it's for safety reasons when it's shipping but um, even though it's wet it's still not legal to uh, transport it so uh, dry it out thoroughly before you use flash paper to ensure that you get the best use out of it so we've got a premium flash paper you can print on the uh, standard flash paper is for normal flash productions and things um, the printable flash paper can be used to print the card backs or we do actually have some excellent quality uh, Saturn Magic flash red card backs which look superb which you can stick to your card box uh, or you can print your own which won't look as nice uh, but to be honest it doesn't really matter um, we said this loads of times it doesn't really matter but I must admit I do now use the printed ones because they do look really nice uh, and I'm also a bit lazy and don't want to have to cut them up and, and everything and print them so I just use the ready made ones now anyway 10 in a pack and not bad value for money and very good quality you can also get a steel template for making the smoking uh, image on the back of the playing cards uh, but you don't need that you can quite easily make your own but again some people have bought the steel template because again it just saves them having to remake templates uh, when they wear out so that's a very quick explanation there on stickman bob great effect stephen holt so if you fancy getting that uh, and understand um, you know about the use of flash paper and things in your performances uh, then i think you'll absolutely love it Yeah, actually, if you made a nice, <laughs> uh, depends if you if you uh, didn't get them to sign the card. You I'm just seeing what Rod's saying about uh, Stickman Bob and Reborn. Um, with Reborn, you can uh, we're just flash producing blocks of ice with nothing in. Uh, but if you were to freeze a playing card folded up or uh, inside a block of ice, uh, it wouldn't be signed. But uh, or you could have a torn corner if you use some method for re reproducing the torn corner. Uh, you could end up with a torn corner um, playing card with Bob frozen on a block of ice, possibly, yeah, as an another option. Uh, it's amazing what people come up with with ideas for routines, and that's, that's really good, really, when people do come up with their own ideas, rather than copying exactly what's on the tutorial. So that sounds like it's got a bit of, uh, um, a bit of uh, legs, let's say, in that kind of idea for putting a card inside. Uh, the block of ice. Of course you can put a sign card in a block of ice with remaxed isolation uh, or you could put a torn corner uh, inside an ice cube quite easily. Um, you do have to remember though if you are going to freeze uh, paper, either written predictions or playing cards into an ice cube uh, for, for reborn or something like that, you do have to waterproof them first um, because otherwise uh, they, they'll go all black. If you've ever dropped a playing card into some water and just left it there for about 20 minutes, the whole thing will just delaminate. Um, so uh, you do need to, and that would happen while it, before it froze. So you know you, you have to waterproof cards or paper before you freeze it, otherwise it won't remain stable during the freezing process. Scott saying, is the light by Michael uh, Chaplin that would be effect any good or is Shine better? Um, yeah, Shine is the remote control. I couldn't remember the name of the um, 007 one. Uh, that's the Shine by Magic 007. I would say that uh, you, the Michael Chaplin effect <laughs> uh, is someone picks a card and um, you've got a bulb on the table uh, which is screwed into a card box, into a hole in the card box and you're going along sort of one at a time uh, like this and when you get to the card uh, that they chose there's a flash uh, from the light bulb and you put it down again there's another flash from the light bulb um, and everything can be examined on the light bulb because uh, it can be it's just screwed into a hole in, hole in the box um, so yes, if you were to use um, the shine 
you could still it's a bigger bulb so you could technically still screw it into a light box if you wanted to you'd need a bigger hole uh, or you could just get the spectator to hold the bulb and uh, they could touch the cards to it themselves and then when you want it to it could light so really yes you can end up with a much much cleaner and more impressive and certainly even a routine that i would do because the I must be honest, the way Michael Chaplin does his one, uh, I wasn't too impressed, to be honest. The, the, the method and everything was a bit, um, well, it wasn't great, I didn't think. Uh, it works, uh, don't give me that, but the amount of work you have to do to make it work and the way it works, I just wasn't really impressed. Uh, but no, uh, that, uh, Scott, is a good idea that you can reproduce that effect using the shine and be a lot, uh, lot better, a lot cleaner, a lot more hands-off than the way Michael was doing it. So yeah, good idea. Okay, uh, I think I've answered most of the uh, questions that I've seen here. I do occasionally miss the odd one, so I'm not doing that on purpose. Uh, so um, if I have happened to miss your question, I always try and fill them in later if I have missed any on the live. So I don't ignore people on purpose. It's just very difficult to talk to the camera and spot the questions as I'm going down there uh, live as I'm talking to you now. Uh, I also this evening haven't said and finally, because I had people saying to me, you say, and finally, and then I find out you talked on for another 15 minutes because I never know what people are going to say. So when I think, for instance, that what I talked about last was going to be the last thing, then uh, sometimes someone can mention something and then it doesn't end up being the last thing. So again, I'm having one final quick look here. Uh, I see uh, Dave's come on pretty close to the end there, Dave, but you'll be able to rewatch the live from the beginning. Uh, so thanks very much for tuning in this evening everybody thanks very much again for your support in august making it our birthday month the best ever sales month we've had which has been absolutely fantastic and uh, we just look forward to what's coming out now in the run-up to christmas because normally there's a load of good stuff that comes out in the run-up to christmas and um, if august has been as good as it's been because uh, we've had reborn we've had celebrity pre save we've got connected we've got magical goodness knows what's going to happen in the next few months so uh, thanks again uh, for tuning in and uh, look out for uh, more notifications from us uh, when 